Hello, and welcome to our session on enhancing your performance management question practice. We'll show you how to effectively debrief and self-mark your own answers. My name is Steve Willis. I'm an expert ACCA tutor, and I will be your guide in this presentation. We're going to look at three typical performance management questions that come up in section C of the exam. We'll start with limiting factors and a challenging spreadsheet question. We'll move to performance evaluation, a question that mixes numerical calculation-based skills with writing skills. And lastly, we'll look at a budgeting, discussion-based or discursive style question. Let's start with limiting factors. If we're marking a limiting factor type of question or any numerical spreadsheet type of question for that matter, we need to find the marking guide and the marks are awarded by completing the individual steps that are built up to get to that final answer. Now, remember this, a simple calculation is usually worth one half of a mark. So if we're calculating something like a contribution per unit by subtracting a variable cost from a selling price, that's something that would be worth half of a mark. It's important that you follow the own figure rule. This means you won't be punished twice for the same mistake. So if your result is incorrect because your calculation has a mistake, you lose credit at that stage. However, that figure is then assumed correct in the rest of the answer wherever you use it. Let's talk about the layout of your spreadsheet work. There are many ways to approach a spreadsheet solution and your layout may look different from what you see in the model answer. That is not a problem. There are no marks for the layout. The marks are only awarded for the results. So don't worry if your answer looks different from what you see in the model answer as long as you're following good spreadsheet exam technique. Now, following on to that, there are no marks for formatting, spreadsheet skills, or financial modeling. So there are no extra skills marks to be given. The marks need to follow what you see in the marking guide. Now, if a figure is incorrect. If a result in a cell does not match what you see in the solution, you need to click on that cell and check the formula because there may be partial marks available if that cell is built up from several smaller calculations. All right, let's jump in and look at a student's work and mark it together. I'm now in the practice platform and I'm looking at practice exam one, question 32, CSC part A. Now let's have a look at what is being asked from us here. Okay. We need to calculate a shortage of beta, a production plan, and then a total profit to earn a total of six marks. Now, guys, before you go on, I suggest you press pause. You find this question in your revision kit or in the practice platform. Read the scenario. Try this at home in the spreadsheet tool, then come back and continue watching the video. Welcome back. Let's look at this student's work. First observation, boy, what lovely spreadsheet skills they've used. Very well laid out answer. I'm looking for a shortage. I'm looking for a production plan. I'm looking for a ranking and a profit. All of those figures are jumping out at me and we see a nice step-by-step -step approach in effect, even though this work does not match the layout of the model solution. Not a problem as far as marks go. Now, 
We can't do anything until we look at the marking guide, which I will reproduce for you right here. And we see there are five things to give marks for. The shortage of beta, the contribution per gram, the ranking, the optimum production plan, and the profit. Right off the bat, we see that the profit in this student's work does not match the solution. So we need to dig into this and get started marking piece by piece. Now, if we find the shortage of beta, the correct answer, okay, is 3,060. This candidate has 3,090. They're only off by 30. Okay, but if the number doesn't match, we need to start looking into the cells to see the problem. And we see okay, that, look at this, the student here has accidentally multiplied the correct activity level of each product by, but they, they've multiplied by the cost per unit, okay, not the grams. So that's where the mistake is, okay? Now, this is 1.5 marks in total. So we're not going to give, we're not going to punish this student completely. We're going to need to give partial credit. And because the correct principle is being applied here, that is subtracting a quantity of beta needed from a quantity that we have. That part was done correctly, so I will award 0 0.5 or one half of a mark for the correct principle being applied. The next item to give marks for is contribution per gram. Okay, that's part of the production plan and that should be in column E. However, there's an error of principle here, and this student didn't understand to use the contribution per gram. They just plugged in that contribution per unit. So unfortunately, there will be zero marks for this, as it was not done correctly, and there's no indication that this student uh, had the right approach, but just made a simple math error. You may be tempted to say at this point, wow, if the, the student got that bit wrong, everything else is wrong, no more credit, so only 0 0.5 marks for this. Well, guys, don't be so mean. Remember, we need to follow the own figure rule and there are more marks to award. The next thing that we need to give marks for is ranking. And even though the ranking criteria was done incorrectly, okay, the concept of ranking the highest item is correct. So we're going to give the 0 0.5 marks for the rank following the own figure rule. The next item to mark is the production plan, and we can find that easily here on the right side of this student's well-presented spreadsheet. And this is worth a total of two marks. That tells us there are several principles in play that we need to look out for, that the two marks will be built up from a series of calculations. So let's look at the approach that's used here by our student, and we can see that the usage column Column H, we see the production in G3 is multiplied by that cost per unit divided by the price per unit. So the usage column is looking okay at first glance. That's looking great. Now, the principle in play here is that usage can't exceed 12,000. And look at that, the final figure in cell H6 is done correctly. So great work on the usage. Contribution column should be the production multiplied by the contribution per unit. So that's all done great. However, there's one little glitch in this 
production plan, and that is in cell G6, that final production quantity should simply be the usage multiplied by one gram per unit. So some error there. However, most of it is correct because one cell is incorrect and two of the very important principles are correctly applied here. I'm going to be generous and I'm going to give a 1.5 for the production plan, 1.5 out of 2. The last item in our marking guide is the profit for one mark. And easy again to find in this student's well laid out spreadsheet. So we see the profit right there in cell I. 10, we need to look into that and see if the correct approach has been used. And it's the sum of, look, the fixed costs above it and the contribution. So the approach is 100% correct. So we apply the own figure rule and I will give one mark for the profit. How did our student do in the end? Well, we see a total of, let's have a look here, we see a total of 3.5 marks. So our student got a pass. Yes, there were some significant errors of principle here. However, with good spreadsheet exam technique, the student got all the way through the problem and was able to pick up enough marks following the own figure rule to clear the three mark threshold. Let's move on to performance evaluation. And when we're looking at a performance evaluation type of question, there's usually a specific amount of marks that are available for the calculations. In this case, seven, for example. So this tells us that the bulk of the marks will come from the writing. Okay? And it's the writing that is harder to mark than the numbers. Now, the task in these type of questions is either discuss or evaluate performance, and you only get the mark if you demonstrate a cause-effect relationship. For example, showing how something happened or showing why something happened. Guys, there are no marks available for general comments, like this is a good sign or this is a bad sign. That alone does not get a mark. Now, there are no marks available for spelling or grammar. This means you're not punished if you have a grammar or spelling mistakes, and you don't get extra credit if you are writing like Shakespeare. Okay, as long as the marking team understands your message, you will get the credit. Now, once again, a performance evaluation type of question will combine uh, numerical skills with writing skills, and it's usually one half of a mark for a simple calculation, for example, calculating a gross profit margin. Let's get started marking a student's work together. I'm back in the practice platform looking at practice exam number one, Question 31, Jungle. Before we continue with marking, please pause the video, review the question, the marking guide, and the model solution. Then we will start marking this student's work. Let's get started. And we see the verb is discuss, a single verb, for 20 marks, a big requirement. What do we need to discuss? Financial and non-financial performance of a company, okay? And we see a very important clue. Seven marks are available for calculations, 13 marks for the discussion. You've familiarized yourself now with the question and the marking guide. This time, why don't you try and mark this on your own before we get started together. So once again, 
please pause the video, mark this student's work, and then we will compare our results. Welcome back. What did you think of this student's work? My first impression is, wow, excellent exam technique. Everything is laid out in an easy to follow table. Okay, great exam tip for you there when you are evaluating performance of a company. Now, this student has chosen some metrics to calculate. And if you look at the marking guide, these metrics do not line up exactly with what you see in the marking guide. But remember, the verb is discuss performance. So we need to be generous and give credit for any metrics that are helping understand a company's performance, financial or non-financial. And these are great metrics, change in revenue, change in gross profit, change in some expenses. Then we're drilling down into the revenue with two specific revenue lines, a change in costs, and a change in bottom line. So I'm happy with the selection of these metrics. And I see I'm picking up some other figures in these sentences at the bottom. So I'm going to do the easy work first and mark all of the calculations. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm just going to double check that those workings line up with the scenario and if the result is correct. So I've checked the student's work. It looks good. And I'm happy to give half of a mark for each of those workings. I'd, al I'd also like to point out that this student used the correct approach. And this is an important learning point. In performance management, when we are evaluating or discussing performance, we need to do so in relative terms, talking about a percentage change rather than a change in absolute numbers. So we're not talking about the changes here in dollars, but rather in percentage. And that's what helps me evaluate performance, and that's what the markers are looking for to give you credit. So I've awarded half of a mark for each calculation, including the three calculations in non-financial performance, giving us a total of five marks for the numbers. Let's now move to the more difficult part of this to mark, and that's the narrative. Let's read the first part together, talking about the change in revenue. That is a good sign. The company continues to grow revenue. The focus on new technology is chosen correctly. Guys, how many marks should we give that? How many marks did you give that? Well, unfortunately, I give zero marks for that block of text. First of all, there are no marks for general comments up and down. This is good, bad, or positive, or negative. That's only a lead-in to what you're about to say, helping the marker understand your idea. But by itself, that does not give you a mark. Now, the company continues to grow revenue. Well, that's obvious. Increase is growing revenue. No marks for just describing the trend, saying in words what the number is. That's a common mistake. Many PM candidates misinterpret financial performance evaluation with describing a trend. Okay, so that's an important learning point while you're marking here. Now, the focus on new technology is chosen correctly. I'm not going to give a mark there because there's no direct link to the scenario, right? What do we know? Well, if we look into the scenario, we see that this is a retail company, a multinational retail company. They've changed suppliers to a low-cost country. Maybe that would hurt quality. They've also become a major provider of cloud computing services, investing heavily. We also see that they have formed their own logistics company and taken over delivery. Now, very important, we also have information about the external market. We have market indicators. So 
those should be used in the student's answers when they are making judgment statements, like something is a good increase or it's a bad sign, okay? And without linking to the scenario, I'm not going to give a mark. Let's look at the next section together, the increase in profit. The change is very positive. Well, no mark for that by itself. The company managed to increase profit significantly including improving profit margins as profit grows faster than sales. Again, friends, I'd love to give a mark, but we need to be strong and there is no linking to the story. There's no specific reference to this beautiful story of jungle. So I'm not going to give credit for writing that is just general, vague and generic. Let's move to the third part here, talking about the change in admin expenses. And we see, in absolute numbers, this is not a big change, but it's a bad sign as the increase is greater than the change in sales and should be investigated. Unfortunately, again, zero marks. No linking to the scenario. You need to make some conjecture what is the cause of that increase in admin? Maybe it's increased complaints from in-house delivery. So unfortunately, things have taken a turn for the worse for this candidate. Off to a good start with the accurate workings. However, the writing is just not specific enough to earn marks. Now, let's look at the next blocks of writing. Let's pause the video again. Why don't you look again and see what you would give the remaining writing in the table. So I'll pause, pause the video here and then we'll continue. Let's look at the next part, talking about the increase in cloud computing revenue. The investment in cloud computing has paid off. However, this should be compared with expenses. Well, why has it paid off? And I'm not going to give you any credit unless you mention that it's exceeded the industry average of 80%. However, this should be compared with expenses, another generic comment. So unfortunately, zero marks for that part. The next part is 30% decrease. This is a bad sign. Probably the price increases significantly, thus there are lower sales. Guys, I'm giving no credit for this because in the scenario it stated that prices were constant, so no credit there. The high investments are expected. Why are they expected? Give me some evidence. Support your argument with something. However, the trend should be observed in the next period. Why is that? What trends shouldn't be observed in the next period? So another generic statement scoring zero credit this is positive news the company should continue to expand the strategy guys unfortunately again no credit there generic general answer not linked to the scenario let's move to non-financial performance Please pause the video and have a look at the three sentences below non-financial performance. See how you'd mark those. And spoiler alert, the student does better here. Now, you're bumping into some spelling mistakes. The writing could potentially be a little clearer, but I understand what the student is trying to say. And I have nothing but respect for you guys working under extreme time pressure. Many of you working as in, in English as a second language. So as a marker, I'm gonna be very kind. I'm not taking away any marks as long as I understand your message. Okay, delivery on time decreased 19.5%, probably from the in-house delivery service providing lower service Guys, that's the bare 
minimum that you need for a mark. At this point, there is reference to the scenario, so that's going to trigger a mark. And again, that's the bare minimum. I would caution you against writing that sparse for every idea that you're trying to make. Late gold delivery is also higher by 600%. They pay more, that's the gold delivery customers, I understand that, so they're the first to complain about late deliveries. All right, again, linking to the scenario. I'll give a mark for that. Number of customer complaints shows a dramatic increase of 337%. This is also probably from the poor service of delivery. Guys, the candidate here is starting to overuse that one idea about poor delivery. I'm going to be very generous and give another mark here. Let's now focus our attention on the last two sentences of writing, the overall comment. Now we see, overall, the company does well in the short term. Its investment in cloud services was the right decision because profit has increased. However, the company should consider the increase in customer complaints because it will hurt long-term profit. Guys, there is usually a mark available in the, in the performance evaluation questions such as this. That's a nice overall comment. It's tying into the syllabus concept of the conflict between short-term and long-term profit. So I will award a mark here. Friends, that brings the score on this question to a total of nine, a borderline fail. Now, if this student had only developed their writing in the upper part of their answer, in the financial uh, analysis part, linking to the scenario, they would have found enough marks to get a comfortable pass. The last topic that we'll look at together is budgeting. And when you're marking a budgeting type of question, you'll often see in the marking guide to give one mark per point. Now, don't confuse the word point here with bullet point. In the context of a discursive or a discussion-based question, a point means a developed idea. You only get marks for answering the specific question that is asked. So you cannot give credit for extra definitions, extra lists of pros and cons that are thrown in there if the requirement did not specifically ask for that information. Okay. Now, usually, unless the requirement is define something, okay, the answers need to be linked to the scenario to score. Again, there are no marks available for spelling or grammar skills. You won't be punished for grammar or spelling mistakes, and you won't be rewarded for excellent spelling and grammar. Okay. Now, no marks are available for just restating information from the scenario without adding anything extra, without linking that to your discussion. When we're answering a question about budgeting, there are many good answers out there. It's impossible for the ACCA to write and capture every good idea in the model solution. So you need to give marks for reasonable answers, even if they're not in the model answer, as long as they make commercial sense and they are supported by any evidence from the scenario. Let's jump in and mark a budgeting question together. I'm back in the practice platform. This time I'm looking at the PM practice exam number two, question 33, one of the discussion-based questions around the scenario of static co. Now, in the last question that we debriefed, we learned some important points, many of which carry forward to marking 
a discussion-based budgeting question. So I would like you to review this scenario, scenario at home. You can find it in the practice platform. It's also in your revision kits from the approved providers. So you can also look there if you'd like. And this time, really check that this student's answer is linked to the story and only give credit if they answer the exact question you see above. Please pause the video again, try to mark this one on your own, and then continue watching. Let's look at the requirement. Discuss the problems which may be encountered when Static Co tries to implement the new budgeting system. So, friends, it's important we only give credit when we're talking about the specific circumstances of static. So avoid the general comments unless you can link them right to the story here. So there's a lot here, isn't there? We learn about the MD and the FD who have been dismissed, the unethical behavior of the sales department tweaking their budgets after the fact. And we learn about the new inexperienced MD who's given us some assumptions and who'd like us to start using a rolling budget immediately. Let's work together. Let me show you how I marked this one. See if you agree with me. Let's look at the first paragraph. With rolling budgets, one simply adds the time period that's elapsed, say a month or a quarter, to the end of a budget, and then this budget is extended one more period into the future. This gives many advantages, such as improved performance targets and more accurate resource planning. Guys, does that answer the question, discuss the problems which may be encountered? No, it doesn't. So unfortunately, zero marks for that first paragraph and a great learning point here. Only answer the question that you see. Don't invent requirements that aren't there. For example, define rolling budget and talk about the advantages. Neither of those tasks were in the requirement. Let's now move to the second paragraph. There may be many problems when a rolling budget is implemented. Looks like they're back on track. First, they are time consuming to create. Secondly, oops, guys, so that one sentence there, first they are time consuming to create. Unfortunately, I'm not giving a mark because it is a generic comment. Secondly, it's not clear who will do the implementation as the FD was dismissed and two others are out sick. Changing the budgetary system will be a big project for a multinational company and many staff will be involved. Guys, so I'm going to give a mark there for the second part of that paragraph. Okay, Who will do the implementation? Let's look at the third paragraph. Also, a rolling budget needs a regularly updated forecast to be useful. Because the sales director was just dismissed and two account managers are on sick leave, there might not be anyone who can prepare accurate sales forecasts for the next four quarters. Wonderful idea, well developed. The story is referenced. That is a great mark. I'm very happy to give a mark for that one. The new MD is also inexperienced in consumer goods, so his assumptions might not be accurate for the rolling budget. Guys, I like that idea as well. That's a developed idea. That is a practical problem linked to the story, the business situation of static, so I'll give it a mark. So three out of six marks. 
important learning points here, okay? Don't invent requirements that aren't in the specific question. And when the question is asking for something specific, you need to link your ideas to the circumstances of the company that you see in the scenario. Well, we've reached the end of our session. Thank you for watching, and I hope you picked up some useful tips for marking and reviewing your own answers.